Among social science communication scholars, there's unfortunately a lot of confusion with regard to the attribution and the contributions of Claude Shannon to the fundamental questions of communication. To begin with, social science communication scholars usually refer to Shannon's comprehensive information theory as the Shannon Weaver model. They say it is the mother of all models, but the fact that they attribute it to both Shannon and Weaver already shows you that they must have never read it. That, that, that's the only explanation. So to set the record straight, what happened? In 1948, uh, Claude Shannon, a mathematician at the Bell Labs laboratory, published uh, two papers, a two-part paper, uh, in the Bell Labs technical journal called A Mathematical Theory of Communication. Now, Weaver was also a scientist, but more like a science advocate. He worked a lot in promoting science, in, in, in getting funding and so forth. And he was always very quick in understanding when something really big was happening. So after reading Shannon's paper, he understood how profound found this paper will change the future of, of communication. So he asked Shannon if he could take these, this two-part paper and reprint it as a part of a book to explain it to the general public. So a year later, Shannon had already moved on to invent the first chess computer. So he, he said, sure. Weaver took Shannon's work did not change one comma, and what he did is he wrote a 20 page uh, forward to this work where he said, Well, Shannon's work is so seminal, it already led to a bunch of different contributions. Uh, he put it into context, said, That's what it's about, that's what it's not about, that's where it helps, uh, that's where uh, new work is arising because of this theory. So basically, in this 20, 30 page forward, he, he put it in into context. And he also changed the title from uh, Shannon's humble a mathematical theory of communication to the mathematical theory of communication. Now it is the theory, but Shannon would have been way too humble uh, to, to formulate it uh, like this. Now that doesn't change the fact that all everything fundamental in what nowadays is called information theory comes from Shannon and Weaver simply wrote a foreword to promote it. So calling it the Shannon Weaver model would be like saying the laws of motion are the Newton Hawley laws of motion. Who's Edmund Hawley, you ask? Well, he's the guy who helped the humanly awkward Newton to finally publish his Principia Mathematica. Or to call it the darwin murray theory of evolution. Well, who is Murray, you ask? Well, he was the publisher who finally convinced and pushed Darwin to eventually publish The Origin of Species. And now he had a role, certainly, but we don't attribute the, the, the theory to, to somebody who helped bringing it, explaining it to the general public. Only in, in communication science we do that. The people who call it the Shannon Weaver model are the same people who somehow claim that information theory is completely irrelevant for the social sciences. And this is simply not true. In his original paper already, Shannon made two seminal, very relevant contributions. On the one, he gave us uh, a way how to deal with uncertainty, how to quantify it. Most of what societies do all day long is they process information because they are scared of uncertainty. Shannon called the related work the source coding theorem. And second, um, in the noisy channel coding theorem, Shannon said that the fundamental problem of communication consists in replicating a message for at one point, either exactly or approximately at another point. And then he gave us a way to quantify how much both have in common. So for example, how much does on average my worldview have in common with your worldview? How can that not be relevant for the social sciences? Now, of course, information theory does not solve all the problems of the social sciences. Well, thankfully. So we still have some work. So it's on us to pull up our sleeves, 
and to do the related work. For example, information theory doesn't tell us if the sender is happy and if the receiver values the message a lot or even a little bit more or even a little bit less. But that doesn't change the fact that information theory gives us the fundamental building block of a mathematical, really quantifiable scientific theory of communication on which we can build other insights. So please do me a favor. When you meet somebody who tells you something about the Shannon Weaver model, please ask them if they ever read it. If they have any idea what they're talking about before they're making these far-reaching judgments. Well, <laughs> sorry. sorry for this little rant in, in, in defense of what by, of course, now you know is one of my personal heroes. And I think the best I can do in that point is to leave you with the humble words of the father of the information age. Shannon reflects on his life's work in information theory. I didn't uh, think of it in the first stages that it was uh, going to have a great deal of impact. I enjoyed working on this kind of a problem, as I have enjoyed working on many other problems, without any notion of uh, either uh, financial or, or gain or gain in the sense of being famous and so on. Uh, and I think, indeed, that most scientists are oriented that way, that they are working because they like the game. Dr. Claude Shannon was a scientist, engineer, founding member of the Unicycling Society of America, and the father of the information age.